did you always have Fisher Price little people like toys in mind, or were there other like preschool uh, toys that you had thought about doing? Yeah, I, I think for this, yeah, we we definitely um, enjoyed playing with those little peg people as kids, and uh, maybe were the first people to set out to make a TV show based on Fisher Price little people or peg people, if you will. Uh, but yeah, that we we really honed in on that look. You know, it's so simple and so silly. Now, did you find that the the peg people's lack of arms was that more of a benefit, or did it make the animation harder because you had no place to actually hold a sword or a balloon animal or it just kind of had to float there in front of them our uh intention was it would make the animation go so much faster <laughs> yeah. because they don't have arms or legs they'll just hop around um and man we're gonna animate the show so fast yeah we'll be done then, in no time <laughs> uh then we realized that they're gonna need props in order to gesture uh, at anything and like all their acting is going to come from these floating props that they're holding and and that meant that they had to be wired next to the puppet and then the wire needed to be removed in post with computers and uh, we set ourselves up for a lot more work than we thought <laughs> um, but no uh, regrets aesthetically it's uh we're really happy with how it turned out yeah. Oh, yeah. It looks amazing. Um, so, what was the most challenging scene or or character that you had to an, that you had to animate? Challenging scene. You know, actually, I would say it's the third episode, the Kraken episode, was really challenging. Um, it because that was the only that was the only uh, scene that we had to have like a blue screen background because it was all water. So, keeping track of where the boats were, where the Kraken was where the people were was a real challenge. And, you know, we had, there were a couple of Krakens and there were about five different animators animating it. So it was a real um, just logistics nightmare. But uh, once we got past that, we uh, smooth sailing. Now in the virtual set visit, you guys said you had five episodes all being worked on at once. So did you write the scripts and record all the dialogue for everything ahead of time and then start the animation or was there some kind of concurrent well it tends to be an assembly line situation where we're writing scripts and we get a couple scripts ahead and then we start uh drawing the storyboards while scripts are being written and then we get a couple storyboards done and we're writing and we're recording voices and then the voices and the boards get married together into an animatic <laughs> and uh, the 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 line just keeps moving, and so we'll be animating uh, episodes uh, one, two, three, while we're still recording voices for later episodes. Um, so it's it's never as uh, cut and dried as we want it to be. Uh, just by the you know, it's it, it just it always ends up that way because it saves us money to do it <laughs> that way. Um, now, did you ever get any kind of pushback for the adult content, or was there ever a line that you said no, that you had something written, but then said no, we can't, we can't go that far? The, I, I think because we like we all agreed, uh, like Hulu knew what show they were buying up front, so there was never any question like of how far the show should go, but also like. Um, there's there's kind of no point in making a show this cute and only making it TV 14. <laughs> like yeah. you want that juxtaposition to be really extreme or or it doesn't work. Like uh, it could be medium, if it was only medium dirty, it's like, well, why do why are we making peg people? <laughs> like yeah. we might as well give them <laughs> arms and legs and or make it 2D or like, you know, make it look like it belongs on Fox Sunday nights or something like yeah. now, did you, you have kind of would have to rethink the whole show did you have a favorite scene or character that you really identified with when you were when you were writing this um I think I mean Princess Blossom is always really fun to write because she doesn't think before she talks <laughs> she doesn't care whose feelings she hurts um and she gets to act in a way that nobody really gets to act like if you want to live in a society. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so definitely like Prince, when Princess Blossom is on the page, 
uh, are on the screen. It's it's a favorite of mine. Uh, now you had um, a lot of the British voice actors were doing American accents, and then you had Americans doing British accents. Was that by design, or just happened to happen that way when you were making that? The uh, that was our own foolishness. Uh, <laughs> we uh, we weren't even sure. Like we we never talked about it in the pre-production. Um, like what accents were going to go with what characters and we kind of had a loose <laughs> idea. Um, and then, uh, like, um, we just ended up, uh, tr trying things and experimenting once, w once we had actors in front of us and for whatever reason, like, you know, Nick ended up doing an American accent. Alana ended up doing a British accent. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's and, whatever made us laugh, really. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it really was like whatever we found funny, um, and having that flexibility and the fact that they play multiple characters meant nobody could really escape having an accent <laughs> at some point. Well, thanks a lot for your time, guys. I'm out of time, but really enjoyed the show, and I hope you get a second season.